I'm laying down my fingering, I'm looking at harmonic analysis, uh, how I'm grouping the notes according to what this particular edition shows me. And it had no fingering, so I had to devise, which I always prefer devising my own fingering to, to conform with my particular hand. It's an A major and it starts with a bass line, a fundamental bass line, coming down the scale, do, T, La, Sol, Fa. I'm going to outline that to see what's going on at the bottom, the very bottom of this particular piece. This jumps now between the first and second beats. It's in three quarter. So they're tenths, so these are parallel tenths. So I'm getting used to the tenths as I play. When I get to the fa, there's no more parallel tenths. There's going to be an octave and then a tenth. Now what I did originally was bring my two over. So try to get three notes slurred. I mean, they really would be hard to do it. The trouble is it's a little difficult to get over to here after that. And these are detached. So you have to try different strategies, especially when you may look at the right hand, what it's doing above that area, and see what would work if you moved your tempo quickly up, just to snatch it to see what the, the best fingering would be. So the right hand would be against this, if I did this. Let's see if I can do it quickly. I guess it could be done. It's another option, all thumbs, left hand. I feel a little more secure uh, with that, that big spread in the left hand at that point by doing thumb thumb. And the pedal will kind of help me do what's called the illusion of legato there. So right now I'm leaning toward the thumbs, thumb, thumb in the left hand. Feels much more relaxed. So if you could say I sacrifice a little of the legato across that big stretch, I'd rather have the sense of freedom of, of phrasing and accuracy too. So here's basically what the harmony is. You have you have a tonic outlined. Notice one, two is a sixth here. Then you have a dominant, one, two is a fifth. And then you have a sixth chord, F sharp minor. And you have another sixth between one, two. comes our four chord. I'm going to use my thumbs. And then a one chord. And these are detached in the music. And a five chord. And then a tonic one chord. So I see that with the one twos there's a pattern. These are the second and third beats. Sixth, fifth, sixth, So, you know, that, that sort of uh, allows my hand to fall in to these spacings with the knowledge of what, what is the outline harmonically and also interval-wise, what are the intervals. And that's part of the harmony because you can have broken fifths and broken sixths and so forth. So let's continue. Now in the fourth measure, we got down to fa. I think I did this already. And then, yeah, we did all of this. So we're going to see what the next phrase does. behind tempo because I'm just learning. Second time, same thing starts with the same groupings. So you have a detached first note and slur second and third beats. So far the same. I need to know if something is going to change as opposed to what happened before. It does change here. So we have a big jump. This is going to be a B minor outline, which is a two chord. So I'm, I've chosen to go over to two here and to thumb. That's going to be the simplest thing to do when I go quickly. And then he goes to, um, from there he goes to the three chord, which is the C sharp minor. So let's see what he does again. So he's over here. So he's not really going scale wise in the bass. And now he's going to a dominant. What I do here is I float over this way. Because this would be ridiculous. To, you see, this is very awkward to get back quickly. Because this thing 
is going to go pretty quickly. It's going to move. Dum, da, 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 dum, da, dum, dum, da, dum, dum. So already I've got to figure out what I can realistically do in shuffling around with these. So this is the best thing I think. I changed this from what I originally was going to do. And then here I'm going to divide the jump between the hands. So, so far I've just looked at the left hand. Um, now I'm going to look at the right hand, and the right hand has, I've changed fingers on repeated notes, especially, so I, I don't get Rosie the Riveter, I get a very lyrical kind of sound by switching fingers on repeated notes where I, where I choose to. I start with two, remember I'm going very slowly, one, two, three, four, five, switch to two, two, three, switch to two, so the longer notes. Three, five, destination. Two and three. New phrase. Dip down a little. This will be where you have the four chord. Underneath. The one chord. Here comes the five chord. This is a tritone, but it will have basically that harmony under it. I'm trying to be musical even in the slow tempo. Finger switch, two, three, finger switch to two, finger switch to three. Destination, two, three, lift, less, crescendo. Two, these this has tenuto marks, so it means Lean on these notes. And there's a broadening through there, but I'm going so slow that I'm not going to broaden. I'm going to do a straight tempo right now. So now I've decided on my fingering. I know the harmonic outline. I know the groupings of the notes. I'm going to go very slowly, and I'm going to still be very lyrical. This is my early learning stage, which I recommend to students to learn thoroughly and slowly and analytically as well as lyrically. So we have this. That bass line is so beautiful. The F sharp now. This is a surprise. The three chord. So beautiful. Four chord. This is where I'm going to do the thumb thumb. to two and quickly to one. So there's kind of a smoothness there of fingering. Now we're doing the second time, maybe a little softer. Here comes that beautiful three chord, unexpected. And here comes that B minor two chord in the left hand, and this is where I'm doing two to one in the left hand. Three chord, this fits the hand. here was after I got to the tonic A I slid over to five so I could easily find the split from the left hand. So I'll go over that one more time to show what I do. next section is a variation of what we heard before in the treble. He's doing octaves in the melody. Now to these octaves, I, at some point I was doing fives and fours on the top of the octave and it was starting to hurt my hand. So I decided to do all fives. Occasionally I could slip a four in on a black note octave. But what I do first is I do thumbs, very light. <laughs> I'm sliding a little, or I can, like, like this. This whole thing is supposed to be legato. Notes 
sequence to So I always do very light thumbs. And then, um, and that prevents you from tightening your thumbs when you play the upper five on top. If your thumb gets tight, the, the upper octave will be tight and everything will be tight. students who have kind of big big hands at the end of these little subgroupings of uh, shorter groupings of the octaves they might go can be done I've been doing a little bit as long as I slide back into five quickly so I don't feel the strain in my particular hand between one and four you could think slide over to the four and immediately go to the five. These are little tricks of the trade where you take the stress off the, the, the one four octave. Um, it's hard to do when you have, uh, you use fours as you, you're doing a lot of activity because you can't really make those switches over back to your five. But at the end of these phrases, you could do it. So I was trying that too. So now when I do it together, uh, I should really show you the left hand as well doing what it did before but with detached detached all detached notes on every beat all detached and then here it's different he does a, a four chord and then he does a one chord I didn't see that before and then a dominant and then a tonic so we need to know that now it really comes down to the scale in the left hand you fa me, re, do, of the scale. So four, three, two, one of the scale. Fourth degree, third, second, first. Um, so two. With these chords, you might study them for their voice leading to see how they move as if you didn't play the first beat, you just play the off beats. Then you know that it's not such a big deal in your travel because you know how related voicing these chords are. They're not. The jumps may seem big, but the chords themselves are have nice stepwise voice leading or common tones too as well. So that's when I do slowly with the octave, very slowly. Really slowly. Here's where I might do the four to the five. Watch. See, immediately switched four to five on the top. And here you might start with a four, then get back to your five. especially at the ends of the phrases. Um, then he, the next phrase, we think it's going to be all the same because he's still detaching the line and in the very beginning it was not grouped this way, but it's the same notes. It's going to be crescendo, but I'm not really doing that yet. I'm mostly getting my fingering and my groupings. Now here he has a four chord split. And now he has a three chord. part of this is not going to be the same as what was in the preceding phrase with the octaves. So go really slowly to see, um, really slowly. Here's my 4-5 quickly. I really got to the 5 quickly. And 
and since four is next door, I could use a four here. Get back to the five. The melody changes. It goes higher. It goes to E here. And then it stays with E. So it's soul upstairs. So he changed the end of that phrase. Didn't come down to the to the tonic A. He went up to the soul E. It's part of the tonic. Uh, he went me so so. So we have to know what was different from before, and that was what was different. The final ending of this piece is a little coda. This is so charming because he uh, he kind of gets more modest about the ending and simpler. Um, he has the left hand coming in with this little melody. Um, instead of it being an A major, which you just ended with this cadence in A major here, he goes into A minor, lowers the C sharp to A minor. It's so beautiful. Two and three and two and three. C major now, modulated quickly. Then he skips down and does a sequence, a skip below what he did just now to F. for words. Um, and the upstairs, he, he embellishes the harmony or where he reinforces the, the shifts of a uh, key by what he does upstairs. So here, this is just the left hand starting and the right hand comes in with these little grace note and chords. Rest. And then rest two and three and one and a two and two one and a two and three. So he's he's really putting the, the accompaniment chords upstairs in the melody to the cello. This is a cello line downstairs with accompaniment chords upstairs. That's what's happening here. We haven't had that before. That kind of scoring. Let's call it scoring. Um, so together, you really slowly you have. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and a two and three and three and skip to sequence two and three one and a two and three and one and a two and three beautiful so beautiful what he does there. He, he's just, it's very, it's very simple but beautiful. And then at the very end of the piece, and I'm not sure if there's a typo in this music, but I'm going to play it like the beginning, but he has this in um, threes of slurs, so he's never done slurs of three on this space. Lots of rotation. to that C sharp. We never heard that before. And then Very beautiful, very beautiful. So at the very end I'm going, this is very back tempo. in my early learning from what uh, from yesterday to today was a big awakening.